Bienvenidos a un episodio más del podcast Voz y Poder. For all the English listeners, this is just an introduction to our Spanish listeners, but the whole episode will be in English. En esta ocasión, el episodio es en inglés. Si gustan, pueden ver los subtítulos en español en YouTube. Esperamos que disfruten de la historia de Rhonda, quien nos cuenta cómo fue perder por cáncer a su esposo y a su hija a meses de diferencia. Y cómo convirtió todo esto en una historia de esperanza y amor. Bienvenidos. Rhonda, thank you very much for accepting the invitation. I feel very honored and immensely happy of having you here. This is my first episode in English, and I have to confess to you that you were one of my main inspirations to start this project. I don't know if you remember when we met, I told you that 10 years ago, I was planning about doing something positive for my country. And at the beginning, I thought about writing a book, but I dismissed it when I start collecting the story and did not imagine how to translate that horror stories into something positive. So now I shifted the target and I focus on stories of women that inspire us and it end up with your life story. Thank you so much, Yuvia. It is such a pleasure to be on with you today. I am so happy that you're doing something positive for your country and I'm pleased to be here. Thank you. Rhonda, you passed through a really tough life experience and instead locked at yourself in, in a room. You collect all your pieces, you bloom and you transform it into a beautiful book. You are an award-winning speaker. The course that you create, writing your own story, inspires and teaches adults how to write from the heart. Your published story, Meant to be Together, was selected by Guidepost Magazine as one of the top 10 inspirational stories of the year. Thank you for being here. And can you mm -hmm. tell us more about yourself? Well, first of all, I'd like to tell you that I don't believe that I'm the typical writer. You know, when I think of an author, uh, I think about someone who's maybe written all their lives. Maybe as children, they started out writing stories. Maybe they've gotten a college degree in writing or always aspired to write. Um, I definitely was not that kind of a writer. I just happened to have a story that I was compelled to tell. And I just didn't know how to do it. I wanted to reach at least one person to help them through some maybe difficult times in their own lives by sharing my story. And so I, I just assumed that writing would be the, the best way to do that. And um, so that's how I started writing. Wow. And what inspires you to write your book? Well, the original idea of, of writing a book came to me as an epiphany. Um, I was a caregiver for my husband and my daughter who were both terminally ill with cancer. And it was after my husband's death and I was taking care of my daughter, Sherry, that I, I was journaling. And I had been journaling every day for a couple of years during their, their illness. And um, one morning I woke up And I wrote, the first thing I wrote in my journal that morning was, uh, I know it's a crazy idea, but I want to write a book. And of course it was a crazy idea because I wasn't a writer. <laughs> And so, um, but I knew what I wanted to write about. I knew the message that I wanted to share with, with people. I was so inspired and in awe with the um, courage and the acceptance that my husband and my daughter had during their illness that I wanted to share it with others. And, um, but little at that time did I realize that I had a real story to tell that was more than that. It was a true love story. Yeah. Rhonda, and how it was when you first pick it up that pen with the intention of writing your book? Well, it was the day after my daughter's funeral. I, she knew that I had wanted to write a book and I started the day after the funeral and I sat down and I started writing full time 
10, 12 hours a day. And of course, during that time, I was grieving. I was crying. I was reliving. I was enjoying the process, but it was also a lot of painful things to write about. Um, but I'm glad that I started that day because uh, it really saved me. It really helped the grieving process tremendously. And But then I soon realized also that I didn't know how to put a story together. So I, you know, I, then I, that's when the learning process started happening. But to, to grieve and to get all that emotion out initially was an amazing, amazing healing part, part of my journey. Yeah, of course. I, I just cannot imagine how you were feeling at that time. It might be a roller coaster of emotions mm. and, uh, yeah. and feelings and pain yeah. and wow, so so many things. What gave you the strength to to keep writing? Well, Yuvia, there was just absolutely no doubt that I was called to write my story. I, you know, many times during the process, um, it's almost like God gave me this this story in my own life and said, I know it's not easy, but it's meant to be shared because it will help other people. And there was just never any doubt. And I think that's just, that's all that carried me through was the belief in knowing that, you know, maybe more so because I wasn't this famous writer or someone that aspired to write their whole life, but I, I have a deep, deep, um, passion for for being an open book and sharing my story with others in hopes that it will help them. Yeah, of course. So just in a difference of months, you lost your husband. And a couple of months, you just lose your daughter to both yes. from cancer. Mm -hmm. How long does it take you to finish your book? Uh, I, I I just cannot imagine, sorry, like being yeah. in that situation, like with yeah. all the pain. And I think that it is that those kind of moments that you don't want to do anything. You don't want to see no nobody. It's like you just want to be by yourself. And but yeah. it takes different <laughs> times for every person. So mm -hmm. how long does it take you to, to finish your book or writing your story? Well, <laughs> It took a lot longer than I thought. It took me six years. Um, of course, during that time, I I was in a new relationship, new marriage. I um, we traveled. I I studied. I, I did a lot of studying, reading books about write the writing process. I worked with different types of editors. I worked with a book coach. Um, I work, you know, I joined writing groups um, and went to writing conferences. So I just really immersed myself in and, and then spent a lot of hours writing hundreds and hundreds of pages. And, and through that, I mean, there were lots of really happy times, but there was lots of sad times. Um, during one year of that six years, I just wrote about my childhood because there was so much more I needed to learn about myself. And, um, and that actually brought up a lot of emotion for me um, because I had a very dysfunctional, interesting, crazy childhood. So, um, so there was a lot of healing on different levels, um, but it also was such a beautiful thing to bring Greg and Sherry back to life. And, and, and it was an honor. And I felt like, um, you know, I wanted to share them because no one, you know, people that didn't know them or didn't know the story wouldn't have that chance. So that was really a driving force for me. So it was a it was a blessing. And, and it was the most selfish thing that I ever did was taking that much time for myself to allow myself to go through all of those journeys of emotional pain and joy and reliving and sharing and, and really nailing down what I wanted to say. So to me, it was like um, going off and living in a, a college dorm and having no responsibility, but just taking care of yourself and learning and growing and 
and doing that. So it was an amazing time. Um, I spent a lot of time at my desk and some days I didn't get out of my pajamas. Um, you know, so there, there were so many blessings in it. And now looking back, I think that six years just went by in a flash. It, you know, I think there was probably times that I was just so absorbed in what I was doing. And it took me that time to, to really get into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just read your book two years ago. And right now I am reading, I am listening to your audiobook two years later. <laughs> and I just found out like another story, you know, it's like when, when people said, when you read one book once is you, you learn something, you mm -hmm. get something from that reading. But when you read it twice, you start like looking or, or learning another things. So it, for me, it was really interesting now that you mentioned that you, you work a lot about your, your past story, like about mm -hmm. your childhood story. Mm -hmm. And, and th now that you mentioned, I can see that through, through your book. It's like mm -hmm. a lot of introspection and, um, oh my God, is, is just, you just take us from, I don't know, like a silent passenger with you and, How would you describe your book is, I don't know, there is like a lot of things. Of course, there is a line that you follow, yeah. but you touch a lot of uh, topics like yes. how it was like uh, having a hard childhood and how it was being a single mother and mm -hmm. how it was being mm -hmm. a widow and how it was being, uh, there is no name to those people that lose their, their, their children. So mm -hmm. how it was that for you? So, oh my yeah. God, how, how would you describe <laughs> your book? Sorry. <laughs> there's, there's a lot to it. I, I know. Um, you know, to simplify it, I think it's a story of hope. It's about courage. It's about acceptance. But mostly it's about love. And by love of renewing the love in my marriage, Um, strengthening the love between my daughter and myself, um, finding new romantic love on a dating site. But ultimately, it was about learning how to love myself. Or as my daughter Sherry would say, I got a life. You know, it's just, it, it was truly my journey. At first, when I first thought about writing it, I didn't think of it as being my journey. I thought about it sharing the courage and the acceptance that Greg and Sherry had during their illness. And then of course, me finding love on a dating site. But ultimately, I realized the story was about me and my journey as a mother, as a wife, as a woman. Um, and, and I had my struggles for, for years. And if I can do it, you can do it. Anyone can do it. And that's the hope. That's the hope. Yeah. Yeah. And I was thinking of writing a sentence that would describe all the emotions that your story generated on me. But just at that moment that I was on Amazon in your book section, it came mm -hmm. across beautiful reviews. So I prefer to quote all of them <laughs> because <laughs> I couldn't be more in agreement with them. Um, this book is that kind of reading that you cannot stop reading. You just cannot put it aside. Throughout the book, you go from crying to laughing intensely, mm -hmm. plunging the reader into emotional turmoil. You teach us how to set the tragic losses gratefully and receive unexpected love with an open heart. Mm -hmm. You take us as a silent passenger by your side while you tell how to face it, the worst nightmare that any mother could have. Mm. You expose what it's like to be in the middle of a crisis where anyone would think they could not survive. But at the same time, you show us how it is possible to reborn and inspire. Mm. I never expected that a memory of a bed of a daughter and a, a husband could offer some 
such a gift of hope for the future. Mm. Would you like to share us a little bit about the feedbacks that you have received from your book? Well, first of all, thank you for reading that review. It's, it, it was a beautiful review and, and I'm touched by all the reviews. I, you know, I, I get reviews on Amazon, but I, I get so many more emails and phone calls and text messages about um, how people feel about it. And I'm, I love everyone's response and everyone has a different response, which is interesting to me because as a writer, um, it's not my responsibility to see what people get out of the story because there's so much to it that people get different things. And, and um, I think one of my biggest surprises is the response I get from men. Um, because when I was writing it, they always want you to know who your audience is going to be. And I always assumed that it was going to be women. Um, but the men have really um, come forward and, and have told me some, given me some amazing reviews and comments and life changing, life changing um, for them. So to me, that was a surprise and, and a very special blessing um, because um, I. I'm just speechless. I, I, I'm humbled by it all. I, I love to hear from my readers. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And what are you doing right now? It's like you are done with your book. You already published it. And I love it. <laughs> and now you have like your audiobook. But what, what did you do uh, after publishing your book? Well, in 2014, I started, I created a course called Write Your Own Story. And I started, I, what I did was I put together all of the things that I learned and studied um, from, and I put that together for a class for adults to um, encourage them to write their own stories. And um, so that, that was wonderful. And that's where we met, right? Um, of course, with COVID this past year, I haven't I haven't taught at the school. Um, so that's been hard because I miss, miss the interaction with, with writing students. And, um, and then I also um, started offering um, one day writing retreats in my home. I live on a beautiful go golf course. And um, I just like to, it's a different than a classroom situation. It's just more of a retreat setting where people can come and I serve them breakfast and lunch and just pamper them all day long. And they write and they, um, and then they do some sharing of their writing in the afternoon. So it's a beautiful day. Um, but again, with COVID, I haven't done that. So I've been more helping um, writers one-on-one -on -one, um, just through you know, they send me their Word documents, I read them and I, I respond back. So I've been doing some of that. Um, and then this past year, working on the audio version of my book um, was a perfect thing to do during COVID because I got a computer and a microphone and sat in my husband's closet <laughs> <laughs> and did the audio version. And I'm, you know, initially, I didn't think that I should do that or that I was capable of doing that. So I asked my sister-in-law, who's an actress, to do it for me. And she and she says, oh, Rhonda, she says, you 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 should and should be the one to, to do it. And you can do it. And so she encouraged me to. And I'm so glad that I did. It was such a pleasure. It really was way better than I than I ever imagined it to be. So I'm glad I did it. Yeah, and you did it great. You have a beautiful voice, a really a peaceful voice. And mm -hmm. I am really enjoying now your audiobook. And of course, I really enjoyed uh, years ago when I was in your in one of your courses. And I think that writing is one of the most uh, therapeutic ways to heal. And mm -hmm. I would love to, to be... Uh, in your courses, in your place, when all this pandemic situation is over. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, we were all looking forward to that day. Yes, and Rhonda, and 
what do you recommend to a person that just has a big loss as you did? Because with all this COVID situation and I don't know, so many things mm -hmm. going through uh, in the whole world, I mm -hmm. think that there are so many people out, out there that are losing people, uh, that are losing family. What do you recommend mm -hmm. to them? Wow. I know it's been it's been a really tough year for a lot of people, you know, losing losing a loved one, you know, losing a job. I mean, there's been so many losses. Um, of course, I'm all about writing and, and, and writing helped me so much. But I also realize that that it's not for everyone. And um, I just my heart just goes out. I, I, I think that more than anything that if, if there's any possibility of taking time for yourself and, and, and allowing yourself to feel what you feel, um, talking to someone, um, you know, and, and that's where the writing can help. Maybe if there's not someone that you can really talk to, it's kind of like you talk to the page. And sometimes you, you know, you got to get your, you, those deep feelings out, you know, pain and, and anger and all, all, whatever happens. Um, to get it out on the page and sometimes you just want to write it out and then tear it up um, but to get those emotions out I think is really important and it's scientifically proven that writing those emotions out on the page there's no question it, it is a healing process sometimes it makes you feel worse in the beginning but as you if you stay with it, it it's kind of like going to the gym you know you don't want to go and exercise but once you do it you feel good after you do it so the the writing process is really an amazing um tool but um but there again i i'm such an open person and not judging and um you know i think talking about it is is the best you know if you've lost someone um that that you held so dearly to, you know, that's what drives me is to share that story, keep them alive by sharing their story, by, by helping others. You know, I always think back to um, the, the statement of saying that the best way to help yourself is to help someone else, you know, maybe just a smile or, or doing a little chore for someone or just a, a phone call, something, to get out of your own self to help someone else is is a great way to do it. What an amazing and a wisdom words you just shared to us. Thank you very mm -hmm. much, Rhonda. And I've been listening to your book and I am loving it. Can you tell us about the process, like where we can find it or um, I don't know. <sighs> I enjoyed reading it as the narrator. I actually revised the the written word some because, you know, sometimes I would read it and I'm like, wait a minute, that doesn't quite sound right. It doesn't sound so natural. So I actually just did some revising um, from the written word. Um, and it was a pleasure. I mean, it sincerely was a pleasure. I was able to put the emphasis of my voice where I one what i wanted to get across in the writing and you know it just came naturally i i didn't which was really a surprise because i I was in toastmasters for 10 years and i was in um, speech contest and throughout the county and stuff so so i had you know that training but it was it was a different it was different it was a lot more fun <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I love it. Actually, one of the scenes that I love uh, most in your book is when you were in your daughter's family room and she tells you to get a life. <laughs> Can we play the scene? Yes. <laughs> Chapter one, get a life. I was massaging Sherry's feet, imagining my fingertips releasing some kind of magical energy to cure her cancer, when she pressed pause on the TV remote. Our eyes met. She smiled. Mom, she said, you need to get a life. A life? A few days earlier, the oncologist had sent her home from the hospital saying hospice was her best option. 
I smiled back. Sweetie, you are my life. I know, Mom, she coughed. I don't know what I'd do without you. I lowered my head and took a deep breath. What will you do when I'm gone? She paused. You need to move on. My stomach tightened. Since my husband's funeral nine months before, I had been spending five nights a week with Sherry and her husband Chris. But now I had just rented out my town home and settled in to live full time with them. Why was she talking about moving on? Now all that mattered was this time with her. I gently tugged at her toes, hoping we could get back to what our typical afternoons had come to be, sitting together in her family room, watching TV with her Yorkies, Rose and Olivia, curled up beside us. But Sherry had more on her mind. Reaching for my hand, she said, Mom, you know that's what Dad wanted. That's what I want. How could I think about getting a life or anything else other than my daughter? Suddenly, Sherry sat up. A dating site, that's it, she said like she had just solved a murder mystery. A dating site? My heart pounded. Greg hadn't even been gone a year. Wouldn't that be like cheating on him? We had been together for 25 years since I was 30. This wasn't the way it was supposed to be. Sherry wasn't supposed to die before me. I wasn't supposed to be a widow. And now, a dating site? an unnatural way to meet someone. Over there, Sherry directed me, pointing to the Queen Anne chair in front of a tall ficus. As I walked past the piano, I mumbled, This is crazy. Come on, Mom, Sherry giggled. This is fun. Sitting on the edge of the seat, I asked, My glass is on or off? Both. Then we'll decide. I placed my hands in my lap and smiled. When Sherry showed me the photos, I had to admit, I didn't look bad for 55. My hair was longer than I'd worn it for years, and the blonde highlights hid the gray. It was possible for someone to see me and not know I was aching inside. We uploaded one of the pictures, but one last question on the profile remained unanswered. Some additional information Rhonda wanted you to know is... I sat quietly. Sherry was still, too. A profound calm came over me, a peace I'd felt only a few times in my life, usually at a low point. Maybe it was possible there was a match out there for me. If there was, maybe he could meet Sherry before she dies. If he met her, he'd understand my great loss, my life, my family. I felt a glimmer of hope. And without further hesitation, I type these words. My daughter has terminal cancer, and she's my life right now. Why would I be on a dating site? She's encouraging me to move on with my life. What a treat it would be if you had the opportunity to meet her. She is an angel. I read the words back to Sherry. Perfect, Mom, perfect. Without another moment's hesitation, I hit the submit button. There I was, gone forever, my positive, warm energy floating through cyberspace. Sherry and I high-fived and smiled. Then we began waiting. Wow, what, what an amazing chapter. And it's just the first chapter. I love it. And how can we access to your book? Well, it's available now and it's on Amazon. Uh, it's on Audible. It's on Apple Books. If you have an iPhone, um, so yeah, it's it's available now. I, I'm happy to share it. <laughs> yeah, I will put it on the description, uh, okay. the links where they can find it. And when are we going to be able to hear your book in Spanish or to have written <sighs> in Spanish? Um, well, I. I I don't know. I want it. I want to have it in Spanish, but I haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> yeah. So if any of your listeners have any idea, let me know. <laughs> okay. Yes, please. Because I, I, I think that there is so many people that would love to read your story Dude, in yeah. Spanish because it is really touching. It's like, oh my God, it, it, it just helps. 
to heal mm -hmm. also read or list mm -hmm. or listen to your to your story well around that I, I, but also i also want to say yuvia i think that it's written simply enough for someone that's not real fluent in english but don't you think i mean it's not like high it's not like reading a college textbook or something in english do you know what i'm saying yes yes yeah definitely because i have had i've had a, a lot of spanish um you know du dual speakers um read it and i think they get it <laughs> you know yes yes <laughs> it is it is amazing and you write in an english really like um, of Simple. course, professional, but right. it, it's something like in the day to day is something that yeah. you can understand. I hope <laughs> one day we can have it, your book in, oh, in Spanish. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah. And Rhonda, thank you very much for sharing your story with us. Oh. And I am sure that several people drop to tears when they hear everything that you have experienced and you're a really inspiring person thank you for for doing it for publishing your book for sharing your story thank you thank you yuvia muchas gracias por escucharnos hasta el final te invito a que te suscribas para que te lleguen notificaciones cada vez que haya un episodio nuevo te mando un abrazo